Okay, here we go. This is a little look at the Target um, HF3 channel coverage receiver. A uh, very simple basic receiver covers uh, I'll say 0 to 30 I'm not sure what the bottom end limit of it is I'll check that but it, it does long wave medium wave and the short wave bands um, so it's, a, it's an HF only receiver general coverage of course and um, I was surprised to find these are still available new um, I first came across uh, these receivers in the 90s when I uh, I had a borrowed one to test. I found it to be quite a good little receiver. Um, certainly not the um, not the equivalent to some of the other receivers we have here in the shack. Uh, there we go. There's the R5000, which is um, a, a very nice uh, shortwave receiver. And uh, we also have the I see there's another target receiver on top of it, the Icom R70. So, um, along with some of the uh, some of the armator gear here. But, there we go. <clears throat> Back to this little target. Um, as I say, they're still available new. Prices vary tremendously for these things. I've seen them anywhere from 170 uh, pounds here in the UK, new, to um, to well over three hundred pounds. So if you do want one of these, it's well worth shopping around. I would be very reluctant to pay over three hundred pounds for one of these. Um, but for what they are, they work quite well. And uh, I've got another video uh, on YouTube showing one of these um, in action. But they do have some shortcomings. Um, the LCD display uh, is not illuminated so you turn the receiver on the display is um, just the standard LCD um, so that's um, that's a little bit of a shame you've got no noise blanker uh, you've got very limited uh, memory facilities but there, there are memory facilities on the thing and if we turn the receiver around, you'll see the connections we have on the back. The antenna connector there is um, a phono plug or an RCA. And you see the switch next to it. You can actually um, throw that switch and it puts um, a 12 volt supply on the antenna connector so you can run an active antenna and it will feed the the 12 volts up the coaxial line to the um, to the antenna. Not something uh, I would use with this particular receiver. And one thing I want to look at is to replace that connector with um, either a BNC or an SO239. Probably a BNC I think would fit there better. Um, so that's something I'm going to look at doing. And the major, or perhaps the major shortcoming of these particular receivers is um, the only audio output socket you've got on them is, is this fixed audio output, and that is a low level um, output. I think you could probably feed it into a sound card for a decoding um, data modes, SSTV. Uh, these receivers now seem to be aimed at the um, the nautical market there's a lot of ships chandlers and and outlets uh, like that that sell these and they targeted at people that want to receive navtex um data and there's quite a, a few discussions about these receivers in some of the yachting forums and and uh, uh people that are sailing enthusiasts and so on um so probably for that purpose the fixed audio output is fine but for our purposes as shortwave listeners uh, we really either want to be able to plug in an external speaker to this receiver or a set of headphones and um, this socket's no use for that and there's no other audio output. You see the only other connector there, you've got the power connector, you've got that audio output and you've got the antenna connector. So I'm going to have a little go I think at running, um, putting an extra, I'm not going to tamper with that audio output because that could be useful. I'm going to put another 
uh, audio connector in there which will enable me to put a set of headphones in or an external speaker I think that will make quite a difference Shiva itself it's um, it feels fairly well made although the cases are plastic okay and uh, underneath I don't know whether we can see this with the camera but you'll see there I can think you see the front feet there's provision um, obviously some models of this receiver must have been sold with a um, a wire stand a wire bail this one doesn't have one and um, this was a purchase from eBay and I did at quite a good price um, I've also got a brand new one uh, which is the one you saw sitting on top of the um, the Icom R70 earlier and uh, that that doesn't have the wire bail with it either um, but maybe I could uh, get something made up that would fit in there but the priority for this is to have a look at illuminating this display which obviously means opening up the radio anyway and having a look inside I think it's going to be quite difficult to get to the back of this um, there, there are manuals online for these things. I, each, each, the, the two receivers I've got came with their own manuals anyway. User manuals, not a problem. There's um, a circuit a schematic for the HF3 uh, online, but in terms of a service manual or anything like that, there, there aren't any. Um, one of the websites uh, does have uh, some uh, pictures that have been taken. Somebody's disassembled one of these. And you can see it in its component parts, um, but that that's about it. So we'll have a little look inside this one and see what's going on. Um, see how easy it will be to get at everything. Um, I'm going to have a little go at, at doing one or two things with this one. This was the, uh, the, the sort of second-hand receiver, and uh, see what I can do with it. And 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 maybe if it's successful, we may um, we may apply some of the same modifications to the new one I have over there. Um, so I think that's it for now, and um, we'll uh, we'll upload some more about this little rig uh, uh, sometime soon. Right, cheers for now.